driving downtown, a big heads up for you. Starting today, the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet will begin inspecting the I-65 bridge overpass above Kentucky and Brook Streets downtown. While there are no lane closures planned, KYTC says some might pop up during the inspection. So be cautious about road crews if you're driving in the area. The inspections are from 9 to 3 today and tomorrow. This week, all eyes are on Metro Council as it gears up to vote on the city's $1 billion budget for the upcoming fiscal year. There's a special meeting planned for today to dig into some of the biggest line items. Mayor Craig Greenberg has proposed more than a $1 billion for this year's budget with particular emphasis on public safety. $432 million are set to go toward Louisville Fire, EMS, and the LMPD. Mayor Greenberg has said that money will help update facilities, technology for the department, and to retain and recruit personnel. Louisville Fire specifically said the more than $87 million proposed would mainly go toward raises in overtime. Fire Chief Brian O'Neill also argued the raises are much deserved, especially after several high-profile rescues. We've had a couple that are really in the uh, the public eye recently, but our members do this stuff day in and day out all the time. Uh, they take a tremendous amount of risk. Uh, they put their health on the line. So Mayor Greenberg uh, was very, very uh, forward with us. That he's like, look, I'm here for public safety. He's talk, talked about that, and this budget shows it. While there's more than a billion dollars in the budget, there are several organizations that are seeing their budgets cut. That's because federal ARP money is drying up this year, according to the mayor's office. Nonprofits are included in those cuts under the mayor's budget. Last year, the Center for Neighborhoods got $50,000, and this year's proposal, it would get nothing. We were able to sit down and think about this situation, um, but I know a lot of other organizations, this really caught them off guard. Mayor Greenberg has proposed more than $32 million in this year's budget to go to affordable housing and plans to open one building of the community care campus this year. The Metro Council will vote on the full budget this Thursday. New this morning, police are trying to find a suspect after a man was shot on Baxter Avenue. It happened just before one this morning near the Highlands Spinelli's. Police say they found a man with a gunshot wound to his leg. He was taken to a local hospital and is expected to survive. If you have any information about this shooting, you're urged to call the anonymous tip line at 574-LMPD. We now know the name of a motorcyclist killed in a crash in Iroquois Park. The Jefferson County Coroner's Office said 19-year-old Nathan Filzek died of blunt force injuries last Thursday night. Around 7 that evening, police found Filzek pinned under a car at the intersection of Rundill Road and Melody Lane. Officers say they were able to remove him from beneath the car, but he later died at the hospital. LMPD is investigating the incident. Governor Ed Bashir will join officials from the Biden administration today to talk about next steps for Kentucky's Internet for All initiative. It's part of a $65 billion federal grant program designed to expand affordable and reliable high-speed Internet access across the U.S. It also tackles the digital equity by ensuring everyone, regardless of socioeconomic status or other factors, can access access and benefit from the digital world. We'll learn more at today's announcement, which is set for 1130. It is about 6.05 now, and this year's Kentucky and a Pride Festival was one for the record books. The sold-out event brought in some 25,000 people to the Big Four Lawn, celebrating Pride Month with a lot of them there, specifically to see pop star Chapel Roan. There you go, Chapel Roan headlining the festival after Iconopop backed out due to an illness. So many people came out to see the show, they even lined the Big Four walking bridge. This was the 24th year of Kentuckiana Pride, and the event has a reputation of its own outside of Louisville's queer community. Some folks traveled all the way from Wisconsin to participate. We all wanted to meet up and hang out, so we were like, Pride's the perfect place to do it. Times are changing, more and more people are feeling comfortable with coming out or just like being an ally. So I think just every single year, more and more people are coming out to celebrate Pride. So including all of the Kentucky and a Pride festivities, organizers tell us about 40,000 people in total celebrated the day in downtown Louisville. Big, big day for the Pride Foundation. <laughs> And the kickoff to that big day was the parade. Hundreds of people came out to see that. The parade rolled out of Nulu around noon Saturday, making its way down to the Big Four lawn. People with whom we spoke say they loved how the celebrations created this fun and inclusive safe space. I love Pride all month long. I really love the festival and the parade. I love the inclusivity. I love the feeling of 
walking out and feeling welcome because you don't always get that in every space. I love being part of this and how everybody can be part of this whole community and feel safe to be who they are and just be around each other and know that this is a safe place to be. WHAS 11 was proud to be part of the parade and see all of the smiling faces along the route. All right, Sam, coming over to you. What's one thing we need to know? Good morning. It's already a warm start to the morning so far to get the work week started. We're sitting in the mid 70s to even upper 70s across downtown Louisville and much of the metro and remaining spots in Kentuckiana. Today, uh, we're going to be striking 95 degrees. We get you into the afternoon hours today, and there will be a spotty shower or storm this afternoon, and especially again tomorrow afternoon. We'll talk more about our complete seven day forecast. Stick with us. All right.